back for another episode of the Coast Boys Podcast. We're joined today by our homie Matt Maul. Matt Maul, how you doing? I'm doing well, guys. Thank you for having me. Gabe, how you doing? Doing good. Dude, thank you so much for doing this, Matt. We're excited to have you on. Uh, do you want to just start off by explaining a little bit about yourself, a brief uh, introduction? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, so my name is Matt Maul. I'm uh, originally from Danville, California. It's in the East Bay, close to Walnut Creek, San Ramon, Oakland area. I currently live in Santa Rosa. Um, I went to school at Sonoma State, got a degree in history, and I currently work at Frito-Lay as a district sales leader. Nice. nice. So why don't you start off explaining what got you to Rosa? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like growing up, what kind of led you down that, that path towards Sonoma State? Yeah. So, you know, growing up, my both my parents went to college. So, you know, it was kind of an expectation. Mm. Um, you know, they didn't really, you know set the expectation of, okay, this is what you need to study. You know, they kind of gave me the, you know, the freedom of, you know, whatever subject that I was passionate about. So, you know, I had great history teachers growing up. So mm -hmm. that was something I really enjoyed and, you know, a subject that I did really well in. And kind of my, my thinking going into college was, you know, trying to become a history teacher, uh, specifically in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I played soccer, you know, you know, we'll get more into that later, but I had a, uh, you know, high, my high school coach was the history teacher and, you know, the soccer coach as well, but he kind of was like a role model to me. So mm -hmm. it was something I wanted to replicate because not only did, did it look like he enjoyed it, but a lot of people respected him, you know, both as students, players and, you know, coaches and students, parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it looks like something I, you know, wanted to do and, you know, I thought it would be really fun. And, you know, in addition, my mom was a teacher and mm -hmm. I have a lot of relatives that were in the education field. So mm -hmm. it just seems something that, you know, it was, I wouldn't say destined, but, you know, I, I would feel comfortable doing. Yeah. It was like set up. The path was set up for you. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where did your parents go to school at? Um, my mom went to Cal Poly slow. Um, she got a degree in business. Mm -hmm. And then my dad went to Chico State and got a degree in computer science. Nice. Damn. Yeah. Does he do anything with computer science now? Uh, not actually. This past Thursday, he actually just announced his retirement. So that was really cool. Oh, really? Yeah, his birthday. Right, good for him. Yeah. Congrats. So, um, but yeah, he worked at Bank of America. That's where he met my mom. Okay. Um, on a project, they didn't really go into specifics, but. <laughs> 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 um, and then he continued on to Kelly Moore Paints, and uh, he worked on the uh, IT side over there. Nice, dude. Yeah, that's so cool. I don't know if I ever told you this, but when I was in San Bern, like the head of the department there was like. Not the head of the department. I, I took a class, ISC 309. And it was information systems and technology. And the, my teacher was the head of the, the IT department there. Okay. And he was like always, always telling us about like people that are in computer science majors. Like there's a lot of federal like uh, scholarships. Yeah. Like $60,000 for uh, upperclassmen. Like if you, if you get the scholarship, you do these classes, like you can get a federal job right out of college and you can do whatever you want with the 60, 60 grand. And I just oh, remember wow. thinking, dude, like, if I could go back and do it again, I probably would have done computer science because, because I'm, dude, you know what I'm saying? Like everything I'm, with technology is yes, going to go like up. It's, it's such like a useful tool nowadays, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and I think what my dad kind of stressed was computer science was a relatively newer subject because mm. computers weren't, they were, you know, right. relatively well, new. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he was kind of like a pioneer in that. Mm. Um, cool. And kind of, you know, as Kelly Moore and, you know, Bank of America was, you know, adjusting to that, you know technology, you yeah. know, and that's advan advancements. Well, um, you know, going into the new century, mm -hmm. that's where he kind of, um, you know, saw a lot of great success in his career path. Yeah. So. Damn. That's true. Um, what is it about history that, that fascinates you or what kind of history? You know, I mean, the specific, you know, time, time period that I, I was really passionate about was like World War II and, you know, post-war like going Dude, to cold war too. so that you know i just think it was you know really fascinating um you know a lot of the movies um that you watch like you know saving private ryan comes to mind i watched man mm -hmm. of brothers during the quarantine so mm -hmm. that was you know really fun to watch um you know I, I just think kind of learning you know of you know particular events that kind of shape where our world's at today you know i it's just important. think it's yeah. yeah and you know people always say you know history you have to learn from your mistakes mm -hmm. and, yeah Sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just think, you know, kind of what I mentioned earlier, you know, having teachers that were really passionate about it mm -hmm. and, you know, makes you excited to learn about it. Absolutely. Um, helps. And that was it like rubs off. On it you. always yeah. helps. Yeah. yeah. So that was something, you, you know, going into college, trying to become a history teacher. Uh -huh. You know, I want to have that same effect on my students was, all right, you know, 
I'm going to be this history teacher that everyone loves and respects and they actually enjoy coming to my class mm. and enjoy learning history. Yeah. And not every teacher, um, you know, specifically history, hear that. So mm. when I was at Sonoma State telling people I was a history major, they're like, why do you like history? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's not a subject I enjoyed in high school. But yeah. for me, I, I really loved it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I always think it's fascinating learning about stuff that happened, especially when it's like something that you don't really hear about nowadays. And mm-hmm. you're just like, what? That actually happened? Yeah, it's, it's weird. Actually, to think yeah. It's really not that far along behind. Yeah, especially how was, things are nowadays. Yeah. It's just like, dude, I can't believe they they were like that. They yeah. thought like that. They spoke like that. And that was only like 50, 60 years ago. Yeah. Or something like, and that's, that's just the bad, bad stuff. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, exactly. go back. Yeah. Oh, but what, what you said, though, about wanting to be that teacher that kids can be like, dude, I want to learn. Like, that's what helped me in college when I found those classes where I liked the professor mm. and I liked the material. I wanted to go to class. Before that, I was going to classes and I hated going because I didn't like what I was learning. Yeah. So it's huge when you can find a teacher who's actually like, down to engage with their students and down to have cool projects and stuff and the material itself is actually interesting yeah no i totally agree and it was great because sonoma state's uh history department is really awesome Mm -hmm. and it's a really small group of faculty members and they're all really close and you know the actual department in terms of students was not very big so Mm -hmm. not only was i really close with the faculty members but also the students so Mm -hmm. pretty much you know when i was taking my upper division classes i would have you know, the same people in like two or three of my classes that and some with all. So, so, you know, the teachers knew your name and everything. Yeah, they knew our name. Um, Man. you know, they had a really, really big emphasis on open door policy. So their, you know, office hours, they really encourage you to come in and you know, so even good. just to talk about, you know, personal life, not yeah, so much school dude, life. That, so that makes it so much easier, man. Yeah. And you know, like I was mentioning earlier, I had a big, you know, soccer background. So mm-hmm. one of my professors played college soccer and she actually uh, had a course on the history of soccer so that was so sick did you take it oh oh yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, three times yeah so i was a part of that first class to be on it um and it was really cool because you got a little bit of both of like your personal soccer you know that you learn like over time like you know i'm a big arsenal quakes fan so obviously i know the history of that but you know, tying it into like history learning aspects, you learn in like your other classes mm-hmm. tied together. It was like really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember our final paper, we got to choose like any, you know, subject on soccer. And I did globalization of soccer just so like kind of like talking about how soccer spread, spread yeah. you know, in terms of, you know, other things getting spread, you know, around the world. But mm. It ended up being like a 20 page paper just because I had so much to write about and I was oh, super great. passionate about both. And it, it Makes was really it cool. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. See, that, <laughs> honestly, that's the goal. Like when you go to school and you find, you just find it. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like something that you're so passionate about, something that you're so interested in. So when you do the work, it doesn't even seem like yep. work. Yeah. Absolutely. Like you're excited to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I've had three page papers where I'm like dreading writing them because I'm like, <laughs> it's three pages so easy. Yeah. And then I've had 10 page papers where it was like, it's so easy. I yeah. just got trying to work and I, I well, like What was that material. for you? Like, what was your, your thing that you loved? It was psychology. psychology. Once I found it, yeah, just like learning about the brain, like all the different parts, and like this part's about the memory, and this part's about like fear, fight or flight, the amygdala, stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. I didn't have no idea, but there's all that the brain is broken up into so many parts, and each part serves its own purpose. Yeah. yeah, I just thought it was super interesting. When you were picking schools, you went in as a history major. Did you yeah. apply as a history major? So yeah, when I applied to Sonoma State, it was history. Um, but when I did apply to schools, um, you know, there's a couple of factors. So History was a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, most state schools that I applied to had that. Um, but there's some that if they didn't, I was actually pretty interested in uh, kinesiology. Mm. And then I did, you know, kind of business as a back, you know, as a backup if there was, you know, neither of those. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, there was one school specifically um, that was uh, strictly business. So that was Menlo College that I was considering. Yeah, so that's yeah, like a you know, uh, business only yeah. school. So. I was looking into sports uh, management and then uh, b- uh, business administration were mm-hmm. the two that I was looking at over there. But, um, you know, kind of what I was going at when it come, when it came to school decisions, it was not only the subject, but also, you know, I had a really strong ambition to play soccer. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the recruiting path was, you know, very different. Um, you know, I didn't have any family members that actually played college soccer yeah and my dad played football and track so did he play in college he he did track at chico okay. um nice. but chico i didn't think had a football team when he was there so um or i'm not really sure but yeah he didn't play football up there but 
I didn't really have anyone to really look up to when it came to soccer. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just my my idol was Landon Donovan. That's mm-hmm. why I wore twenty one and ten. You know, <laughs> big you know big you know I was a huge fan of him. Yeah, when he played for the Quakes um, and all that. And I remember vividly the O two World Cup, um, U.S. making the quarters, and you know he had a huge influence on that run. But yeah, so when it came to you know choosing colleges, it was okay. Can I see myself playing there? Mm. And does it have the subject that I want to, you know, you know, study? study yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, but yeah. Well, so I'm, what were your school choices? Or what so did you have in mind? my, my top school was St. Mary's, um, in Moraga. In Moraga. Yeah. So, nice. um, that kind of had all three that I was really looking at. It had a history, uh, major. It was a D one school for soccer and it's relatively small. And then um, I grew up as a Catholic, so it was actually a Jesuit school. So mm-hmm. it kind of had all three. Perfect. And I just and it's close to home. Um, so you know, my if I were to have played there, um, you know, my parents would have came uh, to watch me and everything. So that was kind of my like number one school choice if I were to study and play soccer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of put all my eggs in that basket, mm-hmm. and I think that's what really hurt mm-hmm. me on the recruiting process. And I. I started kind of thinking about trying to play college soccer my sophomore year of high school Mm -hmm. and ID camps are huge, 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 bro. So my first ID camp was Chico state. So that's where my dad went. So Mm -hmm. he just signed me up just like, Hey, I know you want to play college soccer. I signed you up for Chico state's ID camp. Your your parents are super supportive. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, So you had no idea. He just signed you up. He's like, all right, I'm letting you know. Yeah. (laughs) And it was after my freshman year of playing soccer. So pretty much that summer going into sophomore year, Mm -hmm. you know, that's when you kind of need to start making those connections, you know, just saying, Hey, I want to play college soccer earlier. The better. Yeah. Yeah. Just a commitment. You know what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. I'm going to be going to camps. I need to know what I need to do to get to that level. And the sooner, the better. Yeah. So went there. You know, I think the thing that was really challenging was I was like one of maybe three sophomores, like everyone there was like seniors going to, you know, start their senior season at high school or Mm. transfer students from, uh, you know, JCs Mm. um, that are really like, okay, this is my last year to play college soccer. I need to make an impact. So I kind of went in there just to, you know, get the experience and kind of meet the coaches and, you know, I was thankful enough to have uh, a roommate that was, you know, going to be a senior. And he was kind of telling me a lot about it It was like, okay, you know, Chico is one of my top schools, you know, I'm really trying to play in the CCAA uh, conference and, you know, I'm looking at these schools too. And I I think he ended up playing at Cal State East Bay. So yeah, if I remember correctly, but so he kind of had the idea of like, Hey, I want to play in this conference. Yeah. And I actually did pretty well at that camp. Um, At the very end, they have like kind of like a, 11 v 11 all-star mvp choice that the coaches made and i actually got to play in that so that was pretty cool nice. um and i think i went a little over my head at the time i was like okay if that's d2 i can probably play d1 mm. so afterwards you know cal stanford's nearby um i went to a camp down at lmu um where else st mary's i always went to st mary's but i really it was like it was like do you want or bus that was kind of my mentality mm-hmm. and you know where, where did you where did you get that from and you know what i think it, i got it from was you know growing up you watch d1 sports like football basketball so you're kind of in the mi- mindset of the quality in d1 is better than d2 right. which is not necessarily the it's truth. not true yeah not true. so i think that's where i kind of made my mistake and also having teammates and um, you know, other, you know, other players I met, you know, they were all shooting D1. Yeah. So I went to Chico State camp every summer. Um, and then once after high school, my high school season going into spring, my uh, my senior season, that's when I kind of got the news of, you know, St. Mary's. It's going to be more of a walk on. So I, I, I was a little devastated. <laughs> and then that came from the coaches? It came from the coaches. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much. How did you find that out or like how? Yeah. So um, I think a big thing is when you go to these camps, you want to make sure to get their information. Mm-hmm. So I actually had his phone number um, mm-hmm. as well as their email. So what they encourage is if you really want to play for them is you go to their camps and you actually go to the games. So luckily St. Mary's is really close. So I went to a lot of their games mm-hmm. um, and even, you know, they're, 
you know, in conference games, they'd be playing, you know, USF, which is not too far from where I grew up in. Um, sometimes they'll play Cal and Stanford, some of their games. But, you know, having that contact and always like letting them know, like, hey, I'm going to this game. Hope we can talk. Hey, I'm going to be playing mm. in this tournament. Hope we can talk. So you so, email them and stuff? Yeah. So I gave them like a whole list of my schedule. Like, hey, I'm going to be at this tournament this weekend. These are my games. I know I hope you can come watch and we can catch up. So and they would respond to you and stuff. Yeah. You know, um, you know, the head coach, he was a really nice guy. Um, and then I also got to know a couple of the assistant coaches. So not only was it, I sent it to him, but, uh, to his two assistants, uh, assistants as well. Damn. Damn you did it well. That's like, so yeah. Smart. Right. yeah. So it, but the thing that, the thing that was the issue was I, I only did them. Oh, that's okay, what, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and kind of like what I mentioned was, you know, I, I was only shooting for D1. Mm -hmm. And then once I kind of realized Stanford and Cal was like not only out of my scope for academics, but also playing. Because, mm -hmm. you know, as you've seen, like Stanford has done really well yeah. in the past couple of years for D1. So right. that's where I was kind of like, you know what? I should have probably gone for some, you know, D2 or D3 schools. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, you know, they probably have the subject I want to teach and I can, you know, probably play soccer there. Mm -hmm. So eventually you know i got the news about st mary's he, you know really professional about it like hey you know i don't think um you know i have a spot for you um you know can't sign your letter but i think you getting admitted to the school so i actually got into the school which was awesome um but we would have to have you walk on so which is you know it's kind of a a chance it's not nothing guaranteed but mm -hmm. i think the thing that came down was you know, the expense of tuition there. It's really super high. expensive. Yeah. So I think that was kind of the ultimate factor was, okay, I'm not really sure if I'm going to play for the school mm -hmm. and let alone going to the school is going to be pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of when the panic kind of well, <laughs> came in. When was that? I would say February, February, February my senior, senior year. year. Yeah. So you, I think oh, the God. deadline's like May, right? Some for when you sign, yeah, something yeah, like that. So. For, for what? Signing for a team? For, for signing, right? Uh, I think they uh, have until the summer. I signed late when I went to San Bernardino. Okay. Super late. Yeah. So, I mean, and the thing I think that kind of hit the panic button a little bit more was I was seeing teammates on my club team signing Sign. too. Oh. Like I had a teammate that went to uh, West Point, uh, mm. Cornell, a Point Loma. Mm -hmm. Damn. Um, so, you know, they're going to these big schools yeah. and I was kind of like, oh my God, I, you know, I want to play college soccer really bad and, you know, I'm missing the boat here. Yeah. So I kind of, whenever any school had, uh, some type of spring ID camp on the weekends, I just went mm. and one of them was Sonoma state. Mm. So luckily for me, the assistant coach at Sonoma state actually played college soccer with my head coach at Mustang. Mm. So that was kind of a little connection I had with them. Nice. So I went did you know really well and you know the coaches uh invited me back for an official visit so skip school for a friday that was pretty cool so um <laughs> that, that's like the best feeling ever huh like getting enough like yeah we'd like to invite you you're just reading the email you're like oh, yeah hell, yeah you know? it, it was pretty cool so did that you know did the training with um you know the school team on man i, I want to say the training was at like 7 a.m like 7 a.m to like yeah. 9 i was like oh my god this is really early yeah um so I did that. It went really well. And, um, you know, ultimately Sonoma State said that, hey, you know, we really like you, but we had all the spots filled up. Mm. Uh, but we saw that you got accepted. And, you know, I I really think you, you can be on this team, uh, you know, with seasons to come. Mm. So it sounded a little bit more convincing mm -hmm. than what St. Mary's kind of told me. And the you coach I told you that? Yeah, it was the head coach and the assistant. So oh, I kind of okay. had the backing of both. Okay. And that's where I felt pretty confident of like, okay, one Sonoma State, it, I thought the campus was gorgeous. So when I got the whole nice, tour yeah. and I was like, wow, this is a really cool school. Then I had my subject mm -hmm. and I, I fir firmly believed I had a good chance to play on the school team there. So mm -hmm. that was kind of. And it was cheaper than St. Mary's? Yeah, a lot cheaper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's way cheaper. So. Um, when they told you that, was it after your official visit that they brought you into the office and, and told you all that? Or was so, it like a few weeks after? How did that it, work? it was a few weeks after um, and it was through an email. And pretty much when I sent the email, they said, you know, let us know. We understand if you want to go to a different school. Um, the only school I was really considering was Menlo College, um, just because the head coach there actually played at my high school, mm. and the assistant coach was my JV coach there. Gotcha. So, um, and they were actually giving me some scholarship money, 
Um, but business wasn't really something I, you know, was really passionate about going, you know, you know, going to this subject mm-hmm. and the school was a little too small for me. Menlo College is about like 900 students. Yeah. It's pretty oh, small, that's yeah. Super yeah. Small, small and, school. but I mean, the team was great, you know, you know, I don't want to disrespect their athletic program or anything, but it just didn't seem like a good fit for what I wanted to you know, yeah. do. Um, but yeah, he, he emailed me saying, Hey, I understand if you want to go elsewhere, totally understandable. But if you do come to Sonoma, we want you to definitely try out in the fall. You know, if someone's not, you know, prepared, mm-hmm. you know, we'll cut them and you can hopefully take their spot, you know, yeah. but you have to also be ready too. So mm-hmm. it's nothing guaranteed. And then, you know, we'll reevaluate in the springtime. Um, and then, you know, for other, you know, seasons to come. So, mm-hmm. and then, yeah, so I went to Sonoma state, um, spent uh the first week before school started you know doing the 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 camp and the you know the walk-on tryout so how, how was that because i've never been in one of those but i've heard about them what what is the experience like the first day how are you feeling when you get there what do they make you guys do yeah so you know i was a little nervous um just because you know you're going a week before everybody and pretty much the only people on campus are athletes so like mm-hmm. the girls team was there volleyball um Actually, I, I want to say even like, even like basketball players were there too. It seemed mm-hmm. like every athlete that played at Sonoma State were there early. Mm-hmm. Um, and luckily, some people that went to the the um, my official visit and the camp were there too. So pretty much what they told me is what the coach told me too. So I kind of realized, oh, I'm damn. not the only one. Damn. Oh, damn. Yeah. So and. And I can understand what they're coming from. It, it builds that competition. Yeah, um, they they want to make sure they don't overlook someone that could potentially play for the program. Yeah, so for sure. yeah. luckily, um, you know, one of them I was actually pretty close with both at the camp and the visit. So when I found out he was going to be there, I was like, oh, you know, we'll hang out and stuff. So him and I kind of talked about, you know, what we saw at Sonoma and, you know, this and that, and, you know, we're both really excited to try to, you know, be, be on the the school team, but yeah, that was kind of like, Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> if he's one of them, I wonder how many people are doing this too. Mm-hmm. So I came to find out there was about 10 of us. Mm, damn. So yeah, that kind of kicked in, but the, the very first thing you do is uh, kind of like a Cooper's test. Um, you had to run a certain distance in a certain amount of time. And if you didn't make it, uh, you were pretty much cut. Damn. yeah like right off the spot yeah. so <laughs> when you, you came into it in shape i'm assuming yeah and i have to say that summer that was probably the best like soccer shape i was ever in like i would wake up at like 6 a.m did some you know running with uh actually a lot of my female friends that continue to play college soccer they had their workout packets so mm-hmm. and a lot of the workout pra- uh, packets it was the the coaches wanted them to play with uh guys so mm-hmm. pretty much we would do the workout packets together. And then in the afternoon we do a lot of pickup. And so it was a good mix of like my guys from high school and club playing with the girls at my high school and club too. So it was really competitive. So, mm-hmm. but from what their coaches said was having the physicality of guys playing with them and the speed mm-hmm. will improve them, improve them essen- yeah, essentially. So, sense. so it was, it was nice to, you know, be doing something and and keep in mind, these girls had a spot on the team, you know, Mm -hmm. they signed their letter and, you know, they're not really worried, but obviously, like I mentioned, nothing was guaranteed for me. Absolutely. Still got to earn it. Yeah. So, you know, I worked pretty hard. Um, You know, I passed that, um, you know, that run test. And I want to say I either finished like first or, you know, top five in my group. So I was feeling really good. Yeah. Sweet. But I didn't realize we had to go into training right after. (laughs) so i just so gassed. gassed myself yeah damn and when you're when you're doing it are you doing it with like the team players yeah the school team? yeah everyone's doing it so do you see that some of them are like pacing themselves yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so it was, it was just, just, yeah, yeah so and i was kind of in the mentality of hey you want to make a, fir- a good a, first a, i want to make a good impression Absolutely. like okay yeah, if course. i finish in front of these guys that are guaranteed a spot on the team i belong with them absolutely um and ultimately, you know, we did double days uh, for the rest of the week. Um, and the way they cut people was they put a list on the office door of the coach's office. Mm-hmm. If your name was there, you kept playing. And that's old school. Yeah. And if it wasn't there, you're you're done. So Damn. God, I would hate that. It's yeah. Cutthroat. Yeah. So my first time, I actually made it all the way to the last round. Mm-hmm. So it, it felt pretty good. Like, okay, you know, if I was able to 
be part of the last round of cuts. You know, I, I felt like I made a good choice mm-hmm. for a school that I wasn't, you know, guaranteed a spot for, but yeah. they had the ambition of me continuing on. Did they sure. tell you what it was that you didn't have that? You know, um, they didn't really actually, you know, they gave me some, you know, some spots of like, Hey, you know, th- you know, Sonoma State's playing style at the time was really, um, you know, possession based. Yeah, they're you know, super they, technical. Yeah, so they really want you to, they really want to play out of the back. And if your spacing's not right, you know, the system breaks down. Yeah. Um, and that's something both my club and my high school team, uh, you know, high school, it's really, you know, boot and go, but club, we, we did a lot possessive, but it wasn't the same, you know, tactical formation that Sonoma did. So, I think that's what some areas I got kind of lost. Mm. Um, and I think that might have hurt me at the time. But, mm. you know, luckily when that happened, you know, they still encouraged me to, you know, come back in the spring and, you know, the following fall too, to, you know, try to be on the team. Mm. So, you know, going in there, I think, you know, I was really hopeful, but I wasn't going to be super disappointed if I didn't make it mm-hmm. that first fall, just because one, you know, it had to be someone that wasn't really in shape to be ready for that season that had to get cut and I wasn't, you know, guaranteed a spot. So, right. um, and then they also talked about the club team that was there. So I was like, you know what, if I don't make it, I'll just play club. And, you know, the club team at Sonoma was really fun. You know, that's how I met you as yeah. um, once you came to the school. <laughs> um, and that, I, I didn't realize how new the club team was at Sonoma state. How new was it? Uh, it was like their third season. Oh really? Yeah. So I was like, pretty much the people that were seniors were like the founding members. And it's kind of like, you know, in Europe, they have a promotion relegation. So they started at the very bottom and got promoted to the very top. What My, kind of, what kind of what? schools were they playing um, at the bottom? Oh, they were playing, uh, they were telling me like Pacific was one, Fresno State. Huh. Yeah, it was, they, some were D1, some were D2. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember when we played our first season on D1, we played like Cal Poly Slow, <laughs> UC Davis, mm, um, Davis Stanford, and Cal. And we're just this little tiny D2 school that yeah, we nice. had a player coach. <laughs> yeah. and, oh, everyone else had like a real yeah, coach. Yeah, everyone had like a real coach that the school funded and everything. Mm-hmm. And Dang, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, so yeah, you, and usually the coach is like someone that's on the school coaching staff. Because, mm. you know, kind of like, you know, me and Gabe were talking off camera was – you know, a lot of these schools kind of do the same thing like Sonoma does, mm-hmm. bring in a lot of people for that trial and get really competitive. Yeah. Make sure they don't oversee. Knowing that they have a club, mm-hmm. they get, you know, if they don't make the team, they play for the club team and the coach is coaching that team. So they kind of see them and see their progress and, you know, maybe they make the jump the following season. The school team? The school coach coaches yeah. the club so team? Say, yeah. So say like the third assistant mm-hmm. for the school team coaching staff coach is the, the head club. coach of the club team. What? Yeah. That's exactly how it is in Davis yeah, too. It's, it's very, it's exactly very common. So that's something that wasn't at Sonoma State. Like we did have a coach towards the end, Yeah. but whoever was the senior and wanted to be captain, he was kind of the one that made the choices. Yeah. So. That, that, that's kind of what, what had that inner conflict kind of like people picking favorites and yeah, uh, if you're cool with the, the player coach, then, then you get a lot of yeah. minutes. What was crazy about that, bro? I remember... I remember because when I joined my freshman year, it was it was during big night, and I remember <laughs> yeah. I, I was talk, I was walking around big night with one of the girls. Uh, I was I had a thing with back then, and and we walked by Aaron, and he's ta- <laughs> he was tabling, bro, and uh, I just kept staring at that soccer sign. Who's uh, Aaron? I, oh, I sorry, Aaron's the, the club yeah, president at the club time. president yeah. at the time. Yeah, the yeah. goalie and baller. Yeah, hey, cool guy, and. uh Shout out to Aaron. Shout out to Aaron. My boy. <laughs> and and I remember walking by. I'm staring at the soccer, like says soccer club, and I'm like looking up. I'm looking down, and I walk by, and I look up, and I'm many points. And he's like, "You look like a soccer player." And I remember I was just like, "Yes." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like just waiting for that. You know what I'm saying? Thank so you for the, yeah, so I was like, "Okay, dude, I'm down." So like signed up. They had tryouts, and then uh, I ended up making the cut. But I just remember like um, during that tryout process, you, we would all play indoor. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. And I remember. Just being a new kid there, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the kids that were trying out that were freshmen with me, I met at orientation because mm-hmm. like during orientation, they gave us like a few hours to like hang out and check out the rec. And a lot of us played played uh, indoor soccer. Mm-hmm. 
Because it had a really nice facility at Sonoma. Yeah, no, really I, nice. The rec room. center is really nice. Really nice. That was, you know, a big choice. Like I said, the campus itself yeah, was it's a big choice for me to go there. Super nice. Yeah, and I remember uh, one of the first sessions. Uh, all the club players, like returning club players, would come back with a like a gray Nike Sonoma club shirt. Damn, and I was just official. Thinking, Damn, yeah, just like yeah. kind of like the kid on the outside looking in. I was like, man, I want to be like them. <laughs> yeah, but I just remember that, bro. And, and Matt, like first impression, this guy was like super fast, <laughs> super fast, yeah. dude. I remember that though. That was sick. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, club the club team at Sonoma. Um, I think at the beginning was a, a little tough because you know we had to pretty much respond to what the most senior player and the club president and the and he was kind of the coach captain. Mm-hmm. So you know, as Izzy mentioned, there was a little bit of conflict. Um, my first season since I was a freshman, and I was kind of like. I just want to play soccer. You know, I don't want to cause any, you know, disruption. Yeah. And we actually did pretty well. Um, you know, given that we were in the top tier, you know, we did get, you know, we lost, uh, pre- I, actually, I think we lost all of our games. Um, but we actually did a, a, you know, a pretty decent job. I think the only team we really got like smacked by was Cal Poly and we had to go to Cal Poly. Mm-hmm. So, so that was tough. It's a long car ride yeah, home. Yeah. Yeah. It was a long car ride home, but um you know we only lost to Sanford 1-0 lost to Cal 2-1 um UC Davis uh you know I think they beat us pretty easily but um you know just getting that exposure to those D1 schools was Mm -hmm. you know big um but I think the following season um that's where things got a little derailed um just because we went down a lot of the founders were gone so there was kind of like new leadership Mm -hmm. that didn't really have that experience because they were in, you know, kind of same position as me. They, you know, they were there from the beginning as, you know, underclassmen kind of kept their mouth shut, just wanted to play. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say like my sophomore and junior year um, playing for club were a little shaky, Mm -hmm. but what was different? You know, I I just think that we had good players, um, but the chemistry wasn't there. Um, And, you know, kind of, as I mentioned, we had a lot of people that tried out for the school team, you know, myself included, and, you know, I don't want to speak to anybody uh, negative, but th- they kind of felt they were too good to be on the club team mm-hmm. um, just because. Egos. Hey, yeah, you get yeah. down with egos. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, they tried out for the school team, uh, didn't make it. So they're like, I'm playing for the club team. I'm way better than the club team. Mm-hmm. I should be playing every game, this and that. Um, mm-hmm. And those were kind of like the bad eggs of the team. And. Some players were, I, I believe, could have played for the school team or at a different school team. But some players that were saying that, I didn't necessarily agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where a lot of conflicts, you know, arise. And as I mentioned, we didn't really have a coach. So it was kind of like... I was going to say, because usually the coach would probably deal with all those egos and yeah. be able to manage it. and Yeah. So we finally got a coach my junior spring season. And we actually saw a lot of progress. Mm-hmm. And he eventually coached us in the fall. And that fall season, we had Chico, um, UC Davis, Sac State, and I want to say Cal. But we actually finished top of our league, which was like a big deal. And it was like the first time we ever beat Davis. And it was like Davis A team. Mm -hmm. Um, So we definitely saw the progress of having a coach. And, you know, it made me feel good because – like I said, this was my senior season. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being able to go on top and, uh, you know, club does like a regional kind of tournament. So we got to go to regionals and Mm, we didn't really plan to go to regionals. Where was that at? Uh, it was at UCLA. Nice. Yeah. So that was, uh, you know, really cool to, you know, end my senior club season doing that. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, you know, club soccer is a really interesting thing, um, because each school does it very differently. Um, you know, like I said, like Davis, they have, school coaches coaching their club team and they kind of use that as kind of like a a scouting network mm-hmm. to bring in you know players that do well at club to their school team mm-hmm. absolutely and it's like I a think, reserve team exactly yeah essentially and you know i not i'm not saying that you know that didn't happen at sonoma state i mean there were some club players that eventually did make the school team mm-hmm. but i think if you know one of the coaching members of the school team at sonoma state was our head coach You know, I can see the benefits of what they had at, you know, you know, say Davis, Mm. but that'd be smart. Yeah. I don't know how the club team is now. Um, You know, I don't really stay in contact with them. uh, Kabata actually played. Oh, he did? Yeah, he was playing this semester with him and it it looked fun. Okay. Honestly, I went to like two of their home games and. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing that was kind of nice about the club team was you got to experience college. 
Yes. You know, and that that was absolutely that was definitely really fun. Um, you know, I I I'm not saying that student athletes at Sonoma State didn't do that, but uh-huh. There's not the whole NCAA restriction because yes. it's all student ran mm-hmm. and yes, you know I didn't know that. Yeah, so that was it's fun. Definitely something I you know enjoyed while playing club soccer was I can still get to play competitive soccer, but I can still you know do my schoolwork and enjoy college. Yeah, and hang out and party and do whatever you want. Yeah, for a lot of even a lot of people that joined the club team, it was probably like the highest level they played at too. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like a really it's like a collegiate men's league. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a glorified. That's how I think league. about it. That's how I think. It did, about it. Yeah, and it was some ballers. Like we had, like my, when my freshman year, like Brandon, his roommate, like baller, easily could have played for the school yeah. team. Oh, yeah. no, there's yeah. like two or three players on the team that easily yeah. could have played. And and the thing is also is like you know some people don't want to have that commitment to the school team, mm-hmm. so it's it's still something that hey they are good enough to play, but they don't want to play it. So there's still that competitiveness to play, mm-hmm. and. You know, kind of like what I mentioned, you, you can still have fun, um, you know, playing with all your buddies and then, you know, you get to hang out with them afterwards, Yeah, and, you yeah. know, in the college, you know, lifestyle. That's what I was saying. Absolutely. Sure. That's, that's another thing, too, that I, I can't stress enough. Like when you go to school, join a club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, it, whatever it is. Yeah. For yeah. us in our in our situation, we joined soccer because it was it was something that we were passionate about. Yeah. But there's like uh hiking club there's wine club remember they were in the wine club <laughs> Dude, there's yeah. clubs for everything everything, now, everything. like and that's that's where i met like my core group for my freshman year yeah from that soccer club team so yeah. it's like these guys you go uh maybe i would find out i had a class with some of them we'd yeah. go to the cafeteria together we'd hang out we'd go play indoor together like everything and you just meet your click you know what i'm saying you start yeah. building friends but that's like super important i and like my freshman year was so much fun because of those experiences mm-hmm. yeah so it's like that's super important for anybody thinking about going to school join a club yeah. get out there like get out of your comfort zone meet new people like find something you love totally you know? yeah and, and kind of want to elaborate on the whole club thing is you know i feel like and i don't want to speak negative about greek life but i feel like that's kind of a pressure when people go into you know college like hey i need to join a club specifically greek life mm-hmm. i i wasn't part of greek life mm-hmm. you know i got offered a few times to um rush i, I think that's what they call it right rush and, yeah you know get the bid um you know i enjoyed college just as as it was and you know had a great time not being in greek life and yeah. there's other people too mm-hmm. um but there's people that were in greek life and had just as much fun so mm-hmm. you know, it's not for pe- everybody yeah so it's not for everyone so i don't want you to think like hey i need to be in greek life um in order to have fun in college there's other ways absolutely um, so you know like i said I had, I had friends in greek life too that were you know just as fun to hang out with so for people that are listening yeah just yeah kind of yeah. stress that sure. <laughs> there's there's absolutely. options you know if it's not greek life it's club it's not club, it's the school team. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like there's options wherever, you know? You, you just got to make your it. own, even if you wanted to. Yeah, you can make your own club. I think it's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's clubs on, on Davis, I'm pretty sure it's like people who love watching like The Office or love watching yeah. a certain show, like let's get together really? and we're just going to talk about it yeah. or whatever. That's like so there's clubs for anything, really. So you just got to make it. You should have made an earthquakes club. Or uh, <laughs> <Arsenal. Arsenal. laughs> <laughs> show, show up at oh, Lobos man. and watch all the games together. That was fun too, bro. That was yeah. Lobos, like a little pub on campus near the cafeteria. Uh-huh. And we yeah, would cha- always just yeah, go Champions watch. Champions League day. Yeah. Champions League, yeah. That place dude. was packed. My, People yeah. from like, that weren't even part of like the score club team that just loved soccer we were, were there. Packed, yeah, and, it was, yeah. and they put literally a, all the TVs had the different games. Yes, that's sick. And it, it was really cool. Yes, so bro, like, sick. I, yeah, I think the pub open at like 11 and everyone's there like right as it opens Dude, to get so a spot. it was so hard to get a spot yeah and yeah, like towards cool. the towards like the second half like the second semester the spring semester mm-hmm. like uh, all the upperclassmen like the founding the founding members would be like oh remember to like in the fall at the end of the fall like remember to choose your classes and build it around uh champions league <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, no, that's what they do bro oh, and it was funny <laughs> was, but so the history of soccer class uh-huh. it was once a week on tuesdays but she was pos- specifically positioned it right after champions league games were done mm. so pretty much everyone that was in my class would go watch the games and she was a big barcelona fan Dude, i think i know who this lady is did you have blonde hair like uh, dirty blonde hair because i remember i had a history teacher like one of my ge classes she did do ge so and, it probably was her and I, yeah. I would like catch her in in the pub like having a beer watching the games yeah yeah no, cool. she was like dude cool. i didn't yeah, know yeah, this she, lady was yeah, like she was she, was, like she was with us watching the games and so <laughs> i think i think this was the season um when Barcelona had that uh that comeback against PSG, the 
six. Yeah, 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 yeah. The six five aggregate, and mm. I remember watching it with her, and we like went to class after because you know, like I said, a lot of us were like in there watching it, uh-huh. and she was like wearing her <laughs> Barca jersey, like going <laughs> insane. Yeah, it was, Bro, it was pretty cool. Was so dumb. Class yeah. canceled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't have been shocked if it was canceled. To be honest, that's lit. So what happened after the first year trying out for the actual school team? Yeah, you never tried again, or you just so like, I, playing club. So I did. Um, I tried out the falling fall and kind of the same thing. You know, I, I actually thought I was um, on the team <laughs> really? just because it, 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 one of the last trainings, they were preparing their scrimmage with um, against San Jose state. So they were going to go to San Jose and, you know, they were kind of going over like formation watching video. And I was like part of all that. So I was like, Oh, I, th- I think I'm on the team. Like I never got official word. Really? And they had then, you watching film. Yeah, and then got the text saying, "Yeah, it won't be on the bus." And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So must have been crushed. Yeah, God so damn. I was I was pretty devastated more than the first time. Yeah, and you know they encouraged me to come out in the spring, so didn't do it that year. Um, but the following spring of my junior year, because I something with like eligibility, um, something like that. That if I were to have made it, I had like two years of eligibility. So I could have played my senior year. Then I actually did school for four and a half. So I could have played two fall seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tried out in the spring. Didn't make it again. So I just kind of, it is what that, it is. At spring trial, you didn't like, because I know now, like for those that don't know, I when I went back this this semester, I tried out for the team and I made it. And there was a few, a few players there that, well, me and like three other players that were going to be like, that we were on the team. Yeah, but we were gonna be like it was kind of like a, a long whole semester tryout to see if we we're gonna make it for the fall. For the yeah, so, so it was like playing those games, but we never got to do that due to COVID. Yeah, so I was it was only two weeks of training, so it was just pretty much I got to train with them for two weeks, and pretty much from that was gonna decide if I was gonna play with them for the spring. Mm. So didn't play with them in the spring. And at that time, I was kind of like, hey, this is my last shot. I'll give it what I can. If I don't make it, I'm not going to be super bummed. But that that second time, you know, I like I said, I, I actually genuinely thought I was on the team, but never got official word. And when I got that message. Yeah. Damn, that's so, insane, I, yeah, definitely was pretty bummed out. Um, and I'm not I, I don't know if that kind of carried over to club. Um, I like I said, <laughs> there's some there's some people that were very vocal um i try not to be but there's some times where i was kind of like what am i doing here um yeah i came to sonoma state to be on this team um and then i kind of had to take a step back i actually i think i took some time off in that that club that club season Mm -hmm. like i want to say like uh, three weeks to a month just because i was just getting upset about like really dumb things like Mm -hmm. teammates taking a bad touch me missing a a sitter, mm. you know, just something that I, I can tell I wasn't myself. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so, uh, that's normal, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, I came back in the spring and, you know, I had, you know, played really well um, for club, but yeah, you know, that, that second time around, I was, I was pretty, pretty crushed for sure. Yeah. That's hard. And, and like, like I said, that's normal, dude. Like we, we had a conversation with a friend yesterday and he kind of had the same perspective or the same kind of attitude when he went from club to high school soccer. Yeah, and when you're kind of surrounded by a bunch of people that only have the same goals or ambitions or aspirations you do, it gets frustrating. Yeah, you know, and I can easily say because I I know because I've seen you and I played with you like that. You were a higher level than the club team. Yeah, so I can absolutely see that, and I did see that like my freshman year, like I could see frustration. Yeah, you know, and like <laughs> maybe like you you got labeled like a frustrated player, but yeah, but like when you explain your story, you can see why. So it wasn't a bad thing, you know. Yeah, and I. And- Some people understood that, but yeah, you know, some people that didn't really know me and kind Mm. of what I had to go through, I guess, through the tryout, you know, process Mm -hmm. um, with the school team, you know, I can understand, hey, hey, this Matt Mall guy is, you know, he's an idiot. He's he's, 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 (laughs) he's, (laughs) He's a hot So, yeah. So, and, you know, I think being able to recognize that and kind of, you know, take some time off to kind of make sure I enjoy soccer again. And, you know, kind of going back to Landon Donovan, you know, that was something he did. Mm. You know, he took a sabbatical because he just wasn't enjoying soccer. Mm-hmm. And 
I I still think he should have made the 2014 World Cup team. That's just me. But mm-hmm. that break he took right before and didn't ultimately get picked. Um, but I, I really think that time off from soccer, like I didn't even like watch soccer. I just kind of just focused on school. And this is when I was a gym rat. So I just went to the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, didn't didn't touch a ball for like three or four weeks. And I think that was, you know, something that was really important to, you know, kind of enjoy soccer again. Absolutely. I, f- I feel like a lot of times when I do take breaks, like when I come back, I'm just like, oh, dude, I miss this so yeah. much. Mm-hmm. I think it's important. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because then you do, you don't want to like uh, almost like getting stuck in a mental rut kind of thing. Yeah. Like, dude, it's this is getting old or I'm getting exhausted. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I'm, I'm overworking myself. And then when you do take that break and come back, it can be very beneficial. Yeah, no, totally. But uh, transitioning over to academics. Yeah. When you did go for, because you said you made, you went in, uh, declared a ma- history major. Yeah, history major. So when you were taking your courses... Was it everything you expected it to be? So GE history was like basic high school. Mm -hmm. So I had no problem with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, freshman uh, and sophomore year were pretty much a breeze. And you had to take all four history GEs in order to meet the requirement for the history major. So Mm -hmm. took all four of those. Super simple. Um, You know, I, I, you know, it it felt really easy to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when you make that jump to upper division, that's when it was a real wake up call. What what kind of uh, difference was it? So pretty much every, you know, other week there was tests, you know, kind of like basic high school. But when you get to upper division, your grades specifically is on the midterm and final. So if you don't do well in the midterm, you're pretty much done for. Mm. Like you might as well just drop out. Damn. And that's kind of what happened was I took my first upper division. It was a three three to four hour once a week class at eight in the morning, which was the earliest dude, class I ever took. Dude, I hate those. Yeah. I had a 7 a.m. <clears throat> class and it was shit. And yeah. <laughs> oh don't, I don't God. recommend it. Yeah. So yeah. like, I think, I think the earliest class I took before that was 10 a.m. And I was still struggling to like get to that. Dude, it's hard. I started off at 10 a.m. It's hard. Because you think, dude, hard. I did this in high school. I'm chilling. Yeah. yeah and right? then bro, like once you, and especially you had to commute, right? Your upper division, you had to commute to college. Yeah, well, I, I lived off campus, but I lived right across the street. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't too far. Too far, but, but it was still like, got to get up, got to, so you know, bad. look presentable because I'm going to be in class for three hours. You know? <laughs> 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 Bro, I show up to class in shorts and a t-shirt. This guy has to do his hair and get ready. Bro, I remember my, my freshman year, uh, I was taking a geography class. It was a fucking like 8 to 10, 30 class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My first week, I, I show up and I fall asleep. Both times I'm like, dude, I have to drop this class. I can't do this. <laughs> well, and to make things worse was this class was not only a lot of reading, mm-hmm. but we also watched a lot of, uh, a lot of videos. Mm. So imagine getting up this early just to watch, re- to be honest, not very interesting videos. What was the class? Uh, it was um, Soviet or no, Eastern Europe after World War One, huh. or prior to World War One, but... Mm-hmm. something that one i was not super familiar with yeah but the thing that's tricky with the history department is these professors kind of get the freedom of what they want to teach mm-hmm. so whatever they're passionate about mm-hmm. they'll teach it mm-hmm. so it's not like oh i personally want to learn this whatever's offered you kind of have to pick and choose what finds in you know found yeah. it. want not only you find interesting but also does it fit in your schedule right so i did that class um and I think that class specifically was a, a huge wake up call. Like, like I mentioned, didn't do super well in the midterm, um, you know, just squeezed by on the final to get a passing grade. When you didn't do well in the midterm, did you go to the professor and talk to him? Like, yeah, hey, I did. Hey, hey, what can I do to, yeah, that's my grade? exactly what I did just because, yeah. you know, I never really ran into these, um, you know, obstacles, you know, while doing any of my, you know, history classes, mm-hmm. just because it was, I think it just became, you know, came so easy and natural that I was expecting it to be the same, but Mm-hmm. you know he he could kind of tell i didn't put in the more work than what he anticipated so he kind of gave me some tips you know definitely showed in the final um but yeah that midterm grade you know really hurt me in terms of like gpa and yeah did you uh, fail it no i didn't but Feel there was a, there was another class that i took that same year and i think i was just kind of like Oh my God, you know, all these classes are really hard. Yeah. And I actually ended up failing that one. That was medieval Japan. <laughs> what? The heck? Yeah. So, th- were other people failing these tests too? Or yeah. Like, you know, I, so 
it seemed like people that were um, kind of in the same boat as me, like, hey, this is first upper division. And, and that's what I was, you know, when I went to go talk to that uh, professor specifically, it's like, hey, this is my first upper division class. You know, yeah. I pass all the GEs with, you know, flying colors. You know, what am I doing wrong? Mm-hmm. And he just said, you know, you need to really take the time to read the, pro- you know, the material mm-hmm. and you have to do well in the midterm. Like there's no other way just because these are the only two grades for your final grade. Right. So if you tank one of them, you know, people that tank that midterm didn't show up for the rest of the year. Yeah. So it's impossible so to recover. From it's that. impossible. Like he, they, you know, went to the office hours yeah. and, you know, he did give me, you know, a glimmer of hope of saying like, Hey, if you do really well, you can still get a passing grade. Right. Um, but unfortunately for the medieval Japan class, can say the same. <laughs> and what do the midterms look like? Is it written test? Is it multiple choice? No, oh, it's all right writing. All right, all right. Hmm. And yeah. so, how are you graded on? Just like, is it right it's, or wrong answer? Is it based on well, your opinion so or something? Or? Pretty much. So I come to learn that the GEs were kind of multiple choice with short answer, but when you get to the upper division, it's pure writing. Hmm. So if you're not a good writer. History is not your subject, (laughs) Um, but you have to pretty much have an argument. So like a thesis and pretty much have, you know, the body structure in your paper to back it up. And it also has to be historically accurate Mm -hmm. and you have to back it up with the reading and videos that we were going over essentially. So if you were missing those and then also, you know, as you get, you know, further along in the, you know, in classes, if you had to type something at home, there was, you know, a page limit. Mm-hmm. Um, but in person, um, you know, it's pretty hard to, you know, write something in a certain time frame. So yeah. pretty much you have three hours to write your your answers. So it was usually like two written assignments. You don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. And you had three hours to write both. So if you Finished in an hour. Mm-hmm. Kudos to you. You're done. But some I I took like the whole. Dude, I'm, three the, hours. I'm the kind of person oh, yeah. that takes yeah. the whole. And I hate those kind of tests when my hand starts cramping yeah. and I'm yeah. just like I don't want to yeah. be here anymore. Like I just want yeah. to go home. Yeah. So that's how that one in particular. But in the medieval Japan one, it was, and I actually ended up having that professor two more times. So mm-hmm. I actually understood his class a little bit more. And and that's kind of what happens is like you get a feel for the professor. Mm-hmm. And you take the class again because you understand the f- structure of it. And ultimately, like, hey, the material's different. Mm. But as long as you know what his expectations are, you can, you know, work around that. Mm. Um, and his was, you had a list of terms, had to be able to write two paragraphs about that term. And then there was a short answer on a, you know, subject that you weren't, get, you know, going to be familiar with, essentially. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, but... That was a professor for the medieval Japan? Yeah, yeah. So pretty much he, uh, like on the syllabus, it had like the list of like terms that we we were going to focus on. And this is how his class operated. So no attendance. So you didn't have to show up. Mm-hmm. And That's something different when you get to yeah, college. You yeah, don't have to yeah, show up. That always yeah, gets me. Yeah. And he would kind of just free speak, like no pictures, very little pictures. No PowerPoints or anything. No PowerPoints. He would just talk. I hate that. And he kind of took it upon yourself. If you want to write notes down, Uh you can. If you don't want to, totally on you. Would you record his lectures at least? Nope. Bro, I hate that because there's no structure to the class. So one star. So this guy can just go up and yeah. And and, 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 (laughs) and the thing that he did was he would write, you know, phrases and words on the board. Uh-huh. And those were the terms that would help determine what was going to be on the midterm and the final. So uh-huh. he'll be like, you know, for example, Zaki Kahara is uh, kind of like the time frame. I, I took his po- or modern Japan class because one of the requirements is you have to take a history from each continent. Mm. So that was my Asian history requirement. Gotcha. So I took it and pretty much he wrote Sakikahara, which is like the um, period where no one could come into Japan, mm. any foreigners. Um, so he would write it. And when he explained it, he pretty much allowed you to kind of write down whatever you want to help you remember that term. So that's just one example, but he wrote like random people, random names, <laughs> random terms. And you kind of had to like either take his word for it uh-huh. or use the material to go more into it. So it was pretty difficult the That's first time. Frustrating. Yeah. Oh it is frustrating. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask is once you're up in these upper division classes, 
and you're picking your courses. That's okay. That's another thing too. Like when you're not on a school team, or, like you have to pick your own classes. Yeah, and that's something that I didn't and, know and, until and, like my my last year, bro. Like mm-hmm. my freshman year, they they picked them for me in orientation. The the two following years at Mendo, like the the my counselor did it, and then when I went to San Bern, we had another like a lady that was in charge of that. Damn, that's so crazy because I, I always had to pick my own never, classes. Never, dude, never. And uh, up until I got to San Bern, bro, the, the, it wasn't like the, until like the, what was it? The, the winter quarter mm-hmm. that she like gave me a list. These are the classes. And I was like, are you not going to help me with it? She's like, no, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like so shocked, well, you know? So my, sorry, my question is when you did that, did you use Rate My Professor to choose so your class? Kind of like what I mentioned earlier, the faculty in the history department is relatively small to other, you know, departments at Sonoma State. So Mm -hmm. over time, you got to know them Mm -hmm. and kind of what they expected. So when it came to picking professors, I already knew what to expect. So I didn't really Mm -hmm. use Rate My Professor, Mm -hmm. but if it was a new one that I didn't know, so there were a few that came in, I looked them up. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I did use Rate My Professor. And, you know, I think it is pretty accurate, but also, um, you know, people that fail a class because they were simply lazy, you know, they'll give a mean review like that yeah, professor. You'll find those two. Yeah. I mean, that professor that I did fail the class, mm-hmm. like I said, I took him again and I passed. Um, and I think he's a great professor. So I think it was just me not being prepared of what, you know, the workload was going to be. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really run into that issue moving forward. Um, mm-hmm. And the professor that kind of gave me the wake up call, I actually had him for my uh, senior seminar. So that's the class you have to pass yeah. in order to graduate. And mm-hmm. I was actually really happy I got him because he actually remembered me that junior year um, coming into his office about nice. kind of what's a so it felt like I went full circle. Yeah. And I was able to kind of show him my progress as a history student um, at Sonoma State. That's and awesome. Must have been such a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. No. And he really liked my final paper. So for those that were wondering what my senior seminar was, it was Stalinism. So I had to write a 25 plus page paper about anything Stalinism. So, yeah. and I, I think at one of your previous co- uh, podcasts, you guys were talking about um, paper length, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't there, uh-huh. I, I don't know which one of you, it was, you, you only had a page to write down what you need to kind of get across, right? Was that, was that yeah. easier? Yeah, it was a business memo or, <laughs> or just anything like when they put like limits, like a, yeah. um, a certain so, word or a certain page. So this professor, he was like the grammar police and one of his, and this guy has, you know, amazing accolades. He got his undergrad at Michigan, Mm. got his master's at university of Chicago and got another master's at a Soviet union college where he studied abroad when he was there, when it collapsed in 1991 and he had Thanksgiving with the U S ambassador. Jesus. Yeah. So this guy is the real deal. What a savage. So, but he told us at University of Chicago in Michigan, he, if he found, if any of his, uh, you know, instructors or professors found a fragment sentence, you can't get any higher than a C minus on your, on your assignment. So What's a just sentence? one sentence. Yeah. Um, God, you got to put me on the sorry, spot sorry. like that. <laughs> I, why did I, I don't know what it is. I, it's, I, I want to say it doesn't have a subject, I think. Predicate, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. So. Pretty much it's not a full sentence yeah. and it can't stand alone or something. Yeah. Mm. And pretty much, um, in the whole, in the whole, paper? the whole paper, you just get to see my, <laughs> dude, yeah. So, Imagine the very end, like the last, yeah, sentence. that's good because it keeps you on your toes. Yeah. You so, know what I'm saying? You have to, I guess so, read but, back, but yeah. it's pretty it's hard. So pretty much what the requirement was for this paper was you had to pick a subject under it, but you had to utilize this book. So in the early parts of our, you know, meetings, mm-hmm. we had to read a certain page and we had a, write a page only of what we you know got out of it Mm. and that's where he really you know stressed the whole fragment sentence and Mm. also you know focusing on making your sentences important and impactful given the limited space if that kind of makes sense yeah you can just ramble on ramble on about something it's like fluff yeah so that's what he didn't want in his paper was hey I don't want 20 to 25 pages of fluff. It better be stuff <laughs> that's, that's so hard that's to so do. Hard, yeah. And you're writing yeah. so much. Yeah. I feel like you would almost have to pick a multiple subjects to like make them like talking yeah. points. You know yeah. What I'm so 
you know, my subject that I focused on in my paper was uh, resistance to Stalinism. Mm -hmm. So kind of went over like specific examples. Mm -hmm. But my first five pages was my introduction. So I had a dude, that is insane. Yeah. Yeah. So that scares me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, No, history. (laughs) History was no joke. Like there I had to pretty much on average write about two 10 page papers almost every week or every other week. Dude, oh my dude, God. that is crazy, yeah. bro. I'm used to just like one paper a semester yeah. per I, class. I would complain about five page papers yeah. or four page papers. Yeah. Jesus. So like when God. you know when I got like a four page paper, I can do that like in in my sleep. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. I, so like when I got when I got something <laughs> like that, I was like, oh this is fine. I can dude. do it the night before. <laughs> yeah. So um but yeah, you know, it felt really good. Um, I think I finished with an A minus in that senior seminar, um, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, especially, you know, kind of like what I mentioned, you know, he was that professor I went into, um, you know, kind of looking for guidance moving forward with upper division mm-hmm. and ha- being able to go full circle to, you know, really cool. show the progress I made, you know, between the two years mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, was really awesome. And I also got to throw in a soccer example with my paper. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. So nice. really cool. <laughs> it, it, it's super important like to understand like how beneficial office hours are. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm and saying? Like you're getting, relationships you're getting the direct professors. knowledge from the person that's like giving you the information. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And like you said, you build that relationship with them. Yeah. So it's like this guy, I'm assuming it's like years later, semesters later that this guy remembers who you are. Yeah. You know, like that's, and I, I'm sure I'm, maybe he says differently, but I'm sure it goes into like, it's in his head, like, oh, this is Matt Maul. Like, I know yeah. Matt Maul, and he'll kind of maybe be more yeah. lenient or maybe try to help mm-hmm. you out more, but yeah. it's super important to go to office hours. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with any professors, or do you have any So, like, So the one that did the history of soccer, mm-hmm. um, I definitely, you know, was in good you know, contact with her um, just because, you know, as I was talking earlier, you know, I wanted to become a history teacher, so you need letters of recommendation. Yeah, to that's go not exactly what I was going for. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, when I was doing my history – um, I also had to take some prereqs for a uh, teaching credential. So my, you know, you know, objective after college was to go back to Sonoma State to get my teaching credentials. So mm-hmm. I had one that was a professor in the credential program, as well as a professor that was uh, in the history department that were going to write my um, letters of rec. Nice. So, yeah, the one that did the history of soccer, I was actually really close with. Um, she's actually a soccer coach um, for one of the local teams here. Nice. So, you know, I see her, you know, when I was, you know, a referee at the time, um, pretty often. And, you know, she'll be like, Hey, you know, I saw Barcelona, this and that. And, um, mm-hmm. it was funny. I was watching ESPN FC, um, you know, the kind of like the soccer highlight show. And since everyone's been kind of reporting, uh, you know, from their own house, um, one of the guys, uh, Sid Lowe, he has books all across and, there was probably three of the books that we read in that class that were like right behind his, you know, oh, head. Really? So Sick. I like took a picture. And I was like, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to name uh, her, but it, it professor, you know, <laughs> through the books that we read, you know, I just saw on ESPN just reminded me of, you know, the class, you know, I hope you're doing well. Um, cool. you know, it's awesome. so yeah, it was really cool. So like, I miss you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I was really getting that for letters of rec because that happened to me when, after I graduated and everything, and then I was going to apply jobs and they like, were, they need the letter recommendations. Like crap. Like, who do I ask? Yeah. So I like, if I would have known, a, had a good relationship with a professor, dude, that looks so good. Yeah. Huh. Is that something that the professor put in your head? Like you're going to need rec- letters of recommendation? No, not at you- all. Um, and I think, and, and, and the cool thing too was, um, you know, kind of going over, um, you know, that aspect in my senior seminar was the, the fragment sentence. Mm-hmm. So I had a ton of people just not only read it for content, but also read it for grammar. Mm-hmm. So like I had my mom, um, that high school teacher that I had, um, the that mentor. made me love it. And yeah. then, yeah, the, my high school coach, I didn't actually have him as a teacher, but, um, you know, obviously he's, you know, really well respected in terms of history. So I had him read it, mm-hmm. but I also had her read it. Just mm. because she teaches seminar classes. Dude, that's um, so good. So just, you know, kind of having that connection of like, hey, I need you to read this mm-hmm. because I'm about to graduate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, she always told me like, yeah, I knew you were really passionate about history that you want to, you know, continue teaching. Um, you know, she wanted me to try to become a professor. I, I don't know if I wanted to do that because that's that's a lot more schooling. Mm-hmm. And um, but yeah, you know, she was really, um, you know, really awesome to, you know, be able to write that for me um, once the time came for, you know, applying the credential uh, totally. programs. That's awesome, man. She had your back. 
Yeah. It's cool that she would read your paper like that too. Like a lot of professors yeah, are super dude. busy, man. Like, exactly. I don't even have the time to mm-hmm. to do like a meeting or something. You know. Yeah. Well, I I, I sent it over to her, um, but she, you know, sent me an email saying, "Hey, like, let's meet in person," because you know she marked it up and everything. So, mm. um, you know, I you know it was definitely you know grateful for her doing that. Um, but yeah, it was that paper was. I mean, imagine taking a whole class dedicated to a twenty five page paper. That's kind of how it was. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I, I, I want to ask like people that have taken my seminar, like my marketing one, what it's going to be like. Oh, really? I have nothing. Like I have no yeah. idea like what to expect. Well, you actually, know? my brother. Um, shout out to Mike Mall. Mike Mall, uh, the boy. <laughs> Mike Mall, hey, hey, hey. Um, he just finished uh, his schooling um, in the fall, last fall, mm-hmm. um, and he was supposed to, you know, walk. You know, obviously with what's going on right now, you know, that he wasn't able to, but he actually did his marketing seminar. Mm. And from what he was telling me, they had to pick like a local, um, you know, group or company and pretty much they kind of did things that they thought would help the company. Like improve it. Improve it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know the whole, you know, logistics of it, but I know he focused on the Monterey Bay whale watch. So pretty much every so often they would be with them go on the you know boat, do the whale watching and kind of show them ways. And I, I know one was kind of giving the virtual aspect of it. So like actually having a camera to show it for, so like if you and I were at home and, hey, I want to watch some whales in Monterey Bay, I can just go on the computer and watch it. So mm-hmm. I guess that was something that they didn't do. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Mikey, correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> um, but ultimately they had to present it to the, you know, the rest of the marketing and business department as well as their peers and other people in Monterey. Damn. So he said, I think his presentation was somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes, but he might be a good guess if you want to bring him on. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But, um, ask him more about that. But, um, but yeah, I think that at least that's how it was at Monterey Bay. It could be completely different from school to school, but I know that was something um, yeah. he had to do for his seminar. Huh. Or I think it's called a uh, capstone. I think that's what Yeah, that's it. what that's what it was called in San Bern. Hmm. They call them capstones. Yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, that, that I think that's interesting though because he did marketing. That's a lot of public speaking yep. and, and yours is a lot of reading and writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How how all the majors different like that, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's no. It, and and what you come to realize as a, you know, like I said, there's only two grades um for your history. So Pretty much you're working like half the semester to that one grade and then the other half and, you know, kind of going off of, you know, if you don't do well at one of them, that's going to be your grade ultimately. Were, were all your upper division courses? Pretty much. Structured like that? Yeah, pretty much. That's so weird. Yeah. I've never had a class like that. Yeah. Hmm. I've yeah, always had more than two midterms. And then, I mean, the final. and then like, just, like three. Yeah. Okay. And then like the senior seminar, your grade was that paper. So pretty much if you didn't do well on that paper, oh my God. you had to retake that class. And I mean, there was like check-ins and checkpoints. Um, and we did like a whole like, you know, round table kind of discussion of how your paper was. So mm-hmm. you actually got to post it. Uh, I think it was just the introduction and everyone read it. Mm-hmm. And pretty much the whole class gives you feedback. That's cool. And Are you good at taking criticism or taking feedback like yeah, that? Yeah, you know, I I'm a, I don't really take stuff really personal. No. Um, so, you know, constructive criticism and feedback, um, you know, I don't. Like if you were to say something about me, um, you know, I'm not going to say you think that because of me personally, it's something that I need to understand. And I kind of take it as like, okay, this is something I need to improve on. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way to look at it. And and that's the same thing with soccer um, and same with work too. So um, yeah. uh, Yeah. So I I had no issue with when people were, you know, pretty honest Mm -hmm. (laughs) about, you know, certain Mm -hmm. things. So yeah, I didn't take it personal. I feel like you you end up appreciating that when people are just honest oh, yeah. to you and just tell you how how it is this is how i see it take it for what you want yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good attitude to have. i appreciate that more now yeah absolutely yeah it's a good attitude to have i was gonna ask you man oh sorry no, go for uh it. if you could say like a highlight or like a low light of your experience at sonoma like what do you like the most about it we like the least about it yeah so i would say the highlight was definitely the people um you know kind of talking about earlier that you know i was really devastated and kind of was thinking hey was sonoma the right choice Mm -hmm. i think what made me stay there was definitely the people i met along the way Mm -hmm. um and they made me really enjoy my stay there you know hanging out with them on the field off the field um and i'm still in really close contact with a lot of them Mm -hmm. um you know you know post ssu so 
you know, that was definitely, I really appreciated. Um, I, you know, obviously I think I highlighted it pretty, pretty early on was definitely, you know, that second tryout. Um, you know, I always think of what if, you know, I were to have played for the school team, how it would have been very different. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I definitely don't regret, you know, staying all four years, four and a half years at Sonoma state, you know, it was, it was really fun. I, I definitely love it. What I can say, like a positive thing from, from your experience is at least you tried. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just imagine how you would be like 10 years down the line and you just never tried out. Cause you're like, Oh, it wasn't D one or a bust. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, at least you gave it your all you tried and you know, like some things didn't work out your way. That's how life is. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like everything's not going to go your way. Mm. I get that from my, like my dad always tells me that it, it would piss me off too. Cause I'm just like, that's not what I want to hear. Right yeah, now. yeah. But I, like it's, it's, it's life, you know, it's, yeah. it's legit. And that that's what I take from your story. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you gave it your all you tried and at the end of the day, everything worked out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, I, I, I believe we're going to segue more into post SSU. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I kind of everything, you know, that I'm going to kind of talk about today, you know, I think happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from my experiences, you know, I'm able to learn from them and kind of get to where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's good. It's a good attitude to have. So, so post SSU, you graduate history. What were your plans after college? Yeah. So after college, you know, kind of, you know, touch on it a little bit. I was, you know, still, still thinking about becoming a high school history teacher, you know, working towards the credential. So how to take the CBES, which is, you know, how you become a substitute. Mm -hmm. So during my senior year um, and after my senior year, I was actually doing some student teaching observing. So I would go to Montgomery High, Santa Rosa High, um, did Piner High School right around the corner a few times. So mm -hmm. pretty much would go sit in and, um, you know, just kind of observe, you know, how teachers are teaching um, across all subjects. So mm -hmm. luckily... I kind of got my foot in the door for that when my, so my mom has a really close friend from high school. Her husband is a math teacher at Montgomery high. Uh, mm. Shout out to Mr. Holland. Um, and he kind of gave me some tips of like, Hey, here's the history department at Montgomery history department at um, Santa Rosa high history department at Piner. So, you know, spent some quality time, you know, in the classroom with them mm -hmm. and kind of learning, you know, from their experiences, what they really enjoy, how they got to here. So, a lot of people actually started in middle school, teaching middle school and kind of worked their way up to high school. So mm -hmm. I kind of kind of figured that. So, you know, I think I broadened my scope a little bit of, hey, if I were to become a teacher, maybe starting at middle school wouldn't be such a bad idea. But mm -hmm. ultimately, the goal would be teaching high school. So in addition to being a student at um, Sonoma State, I also worked at Tilly's, which is a, a retail clothing store. So I initially started there on my summer and winter breaks at Sonoma, my freshman, sophomore year. Mm. And then once I had a car, I was able to transfer to the Santa Rosa location. Mm. Um, so when I was a student, I worked there part time. And then my, after my uh, fourth year, um, I moved up into a more of a manager leadership role at the San Rafael location as an assistant manager. And then ultimately transferred back to Santa Rosa as an assistant manager and then became a store manager. Mm. Um, so for a little bit of time, I was actually a full-time student as well as a full-time um, employee when I was a manager. So that was kind of tough, mm -hmm. um, you know, trying to manage not only school, but social life and work. Um, but that fourth year finishing up in the spring, I was playing soccer, full-time manager, full-time student, mm -hmm. and then trying to enjoy college. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. So, I would never be able to do something yeah, like that. Yeah. Juggling so much like that. Yeah. Props it, to you. Yeah. And then... I had still had a half year left. So that, um, that, f you know, last year in the fall, I actually had to give up soccer. It just became a little too much. Um, and then yeah. I worked my school schedule kind of around, um, my Tilly's employment. So, so, you, so you did it that way. You scheduled yeah. school around work as opposed to, the yeah. So way? pretty much as an assistant manager, you had to work weekends. Um, and then you got two days off. So my two days off were Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that's when I had the bulk of my, um, my classes. So I had like three classes back to back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and during that time, I actually, I don't think I even mentioned this earlier, but I actually w declared as a geography minor. Mm. So that's when I finished up that, uh, mm. half semester. Was, what, what made you want to do that? You know, it just kind of goes hand in hand, um, with history, um, is, you know, something else I was really, you know, interested in, um, you know, it kind of all falls under the social studies and, you know, social history, uh, aspects. So, you know, makes you a little bit more profitable and presentable when it does come to, you know, teaching positions that mm. you have, you know, two subjects, um, that you focused on. So, mm. nice. um, yeah, I think I failed to mention that earlier, but 
Yeah. So I wasn't, um, you know, at first it was, it was pretty difficult, but, you know, ultimately, you know, proved pretty beneficial after, you know, graduation, you know, I had a full-time job. I was able to, you know, have some steady income. Um, but you know, it really sidetracked my, you know, my journey and my goal to become a, you know, a teacher. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that student teaching, um, student observing, you know, it, it was pretty tough because when you become store manager, it's, it's all on you. So when something went South in the store, you, it was your expectation to come in. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, being an hourly employee, you know, that was difficult because, you know, when people call you, you're not getting paid. Um, but you know, since I love my store, loved my, you know, love my team, I was willing to come in to fix the issue, mm -hmm. um, you know, and clock in. Um, but that really took a toll on my teaching, you know, ambitions just because, you know, if I was, you know, student teaching at someone's school and something happened in my store, I would have to cut out and go to the store and help out. Yeah. So I couldn't really plan and like set up time to go into the classroom and, you know, do the student teaching and student observing and, you know, also study for my tests. It just became, you know, Way I don't know much. if, I, yeah, you know, it didn't, you know, I wouldn't know if something was going to happen on this day. So it just became really difficult. That kind of sucks. You know, you're yeah. on your toes. You're like, on call. You can't yeah, enjoy your time. Like, I can get called in at any second. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, there was a time where I was like, okay, is this teaching going to really take off? You know, I finished my C best, so I could substitute. Um, I finished one of my C set, which is, you know, required to go into teaching credential. Um, and then, you know, from store manager, um, at Tilly's, the only way you can go up is to district manager, which one, I was not, you know, ready to make that jump. Um, so I was kind of like in a really tough spot of, you know, in terms of growth within the company and then kind of moving on to, you know, teaching. Mm. Um, so one thing I kind of saw at Sonoma state with some of my friends, as well as, you know, some of my roommates, they, they all had LinkedIn. So one day I kind of thought, Hey, you know what? I'll make one. Um, at the time I mostly used LinkedIn more for recruiting for the store. So if there was other, you know, assistant managers, store managers that were looking for, you know, a change in, you know, career direction, they mm -hmm. were able to, you know, reach out to me. Um, you know, that, that's kind of why I used it, you know, prior, but, you know, eventually, you know, you get messages for other store manager positions. So like, you know, I got offered to be store manager at Vans and the outlets. Um, and then, you know, someone else reached out to me to be an assistant manager at the North Face outlet store in Berkeley. So, Ooh, you know, that was kind of cool. cool. Uh, but, you know, obviously th that wasn't something I was really interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you get those type of messages all the time. But one day I got a, a message from a recruiter on uh, PepsiCo. Mm. And, you know, it really caught my attention because I was like, wow, PepsiCo is a big company. It's a big yeah, company. Yeah, a really yeah. big company. So, you know, I inquired a little bit about it, um, you know, had a phone call with the recruiter, you know, eventually went to another, um, you know, talent acquisition specialist. And I, I think the thing that was really interesting about it was the recruiters from New York. Mm. So that's like PepsiCo world headquarters. And then the talent acquisition was from Chicago. So I was having all these conversations for people that weren't even in California mm. for a position that, you know, I would eventually take mm -hmm. in Santa Rosa. So those were like your interviews to get the job? Yeah. So all phone interviews? All phone interviews. Um, and then eventually, you know, I talked to my current boss, um, HR, my boss's boss at the time. So, you know, I had some other uh, phone interviews. And then the way Frito Lay and PepsiCo kind of do it, they do a ride along. So you actually get to spend the day with someone in that position just so you kind of get a good feel and, you mm. know, they really understand that this is something you want to do. So like that's a really job cool. shadow, right? Yeah, yeah like a job shadow. Yeah. That's so really that's really cool. cool. Um, so when I spent the day um, in the position that I would eventually become, you know, it was a good change of pace. And I think the thing that really jumped out, it was a really steady schedule. So pretty much in my current position, I work somewhere between uh, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mm. Every day I have weekends off. That's all so nice. that was something that I never had at Tilly's. It was very, you know, like I said, it was very you know, changing, you know, I kind of had to accommodate to my managers, my employees and whatever makes them able to, you know, come to work every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so I, I started that in October of last year and this past week, I actually just finished my certification. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. So pretty much the certification was, you know, me demonstrating that I completed my training in my, uh, you know, my district sales leader position. And, you know, I gave a three hour zoom presentation of <sighs> my market. Um, 
normally if COVID wasn't going on right now, they would actually come up to uh, Santa Rosa and Sonoma County and I would, you know, show them, you know, my accounts in person. Mm. Um, it, but it would, it, would it be like a presentation style? Yeah. So, I mean, I would still present, um, a little bit. It's more about like the business side and kind of like my team, but the actual stores that we go into mm -hmm. would have been in person, but mm -hmm. I had to pretty much show those sh stores through zoom. And, and during this process, when you're preparing for it, like how long did it take you to prepare and how did you prepare for it? So pretty much the whole certification process took about nine to 10 months. So that was kind of like my training. So mm -hmm. I had to learn kind of the basics. So, I mean kind of give a basic overview of what my job is. Um, I'm pretty much responsible for half of Sonoma County's uh, free-to-lay sales. So pretty much I'm in charge of grocery stores, gas stations, um, and making sure free-to-lay product gets to the shelf mm. and we're kind of maximizing uh, sales from there. Mm. So pretty much my team um, are the people that drive the trucks and the, you know, the Sprinter vans delivering product. Gotcha. So, um, you know, that was part of my training. You know, I actually had to, you know, drive um, and, you know, bringing the product through the back door, at, you know, Safeways, Targets, um, you know, small account stores like the mom and dad's uh, liquor store, um, AMPM, Extra Mile, those type of places. So kind of learning that. Um, and then eventually, you know, you get to holidays where, you know, Super Bowl is one of the big, biggest ship holidays. Yeah. So mm -hmm. having the 49ers in that mm -hmm. was a big deal. Yeah. And, you know, every time they won, it seemed like every Safeway wanted to go bigger and bigger and bigger. So yeah. that was, you know, something, you know, I had to adjust to really quickly. Yeah. It was like, all right, you know, <laughs> a lot of people buy chips yeah. and, and it's, you know, really cool to be a part of. Um, so that was something I had to kind of present to um, my boss and my boss's boss and, you know, people above them was, okay, this is how I prepared Sonoma County, Sonoma County's market for the 4th of July holiday. Mm. So that was kind of what my presentation revolved around and then kind of like my development into the current position I'm in. Nice. What would you say is like the biggest time of the year for chip sales? You know, I would say 4th of July, um, July? for sure. Um, pretty much when there's any uh, three-day holidays. So Labor Day, Memorial Day is really big. Mm. Um, Super Bowl is Super Bowl, definitely I really big. <laughs> I remember um, that, dude. Yeah, and, you know, having the 49ers in it makes it that much bigger. Yeah. So, you know, if the 49ers weren't in it, it would still be pretty big. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you can go into the, you know, the marketing side of it. So Pepsi and, um, you know, Frito-Lay are actually NFL sponsors. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of the POS to really advertise Super Bowl mm -hmm. and a lot of stores, um, you know, really lean on us to make a big presence in, in those accounts. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I would say those are probably the big holidays, you know, holiday or, um, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, New Year's are also big. So the one thing you kind of have to think about is. When people gather, you want to have something to provide them in terms of snacks. Totally. And nothing's more simpler than getting a bag of chips and, you know, you put in a bowl, keep the bag out there and everyone's willing to share it. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and then you, and some of our other products are dip. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have to focus on dip too. Go so hand in hand. Yeah. So, you know, it seemed like every month I was learning something new um, and, you know, finally to be able to present that to you know, a big team um, of, you know, decision makers and uh, managers that are above me was really awesome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, getting their feedback, um, kind of elaborating on the, you know, do I take feedback um, personal? You know, I don't. So them giving them kind of what the inside of what they saw, what I could have improved on was really beneficial mm -hmm. because, you know, they've been with the company for like 10 plus years mm. and, you know, where they're at is, you know, a lot of hard work and dedication to the company, mm -hmm. um, you know, how to take place and kind of hearing, their insight and what they saw was, you know, really informative. Nice. Do you feel like you did a good job for your first kind of go around at it? Uh, are you talking about like my final presentation or yeah, like, like from, preparing for it? Uh, from your final presentation, like you said, the feedback that they gave you, was it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, kind of hearing, um, from what they said, they were, they were pretty impressed. So I was, you know, really happy with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just got me really excited that, you know, I was able to show them virtually what my market looked like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they were in person, they felt confident it was, you know, the same reflection. That's awesome. Nice. When you were, when you were, um, so like you mentioned, you got the LinkedIn when you were at Tilly's and from there you got the job offer on, on LinkedIn. When you were kind of going through that in your head, was it difficult to make that decision? Like, look, I've been studying for, to be a history teacher since I was in high school. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was really tough. Um, I think what really went into it, um, was when you're kind of on your own, um, you know, you have to make decisions that, 
you need to make in order for you to, you know, kind of move forward with life. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it got to a point of, okay, hey, I'm living with roommates. You know, I'm 25, you know, adulthoods, you know, so, you know, right around the corner, you know, you got to think about, you know, providing for either yourself or, you know, for someone else that, you you know, significant other that comes in your life. So Mm -hmm. those thoughts come in and you're Mm -hmm. like, you know, if teaching's not going anywhere and, you know, I'm going to be at this spot, you kind of have to make those risks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think what came into a big part was the, um, did I mention about Glassdoor earlier? Um, I don't think I did. I don't think you did, no. So Glassdoor you did when you were picking your class, right? Oh, no, you're right. No, no, you're right. Yeah. So Glassdoor. What is um, is that? For those that aren't really familiar, it's an app that kind of, you know, talks about the salary and um, job description. Uh So when I got that LinkedIn message, I wasn't really familiar with what the position was about. So I kind of inquired it a little bit more, Yeah. Um, you know, before I went on the whole interview and um, ride along, but it was something that I could see myself doing long-term and staying in Sonoma County. Mm. So, and being able to provide myself if I were to have, you know, live on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, and if someone, you know, some significant other were to come into my life, um, you know, be able to provide for them as well. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I thought, I think it's a great choice <laughs> and I, you know, everyone that I work with at Free Delay is really awesome, really supportive. I love my my building and, you know, my bosses. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited to continue my growth uh, with them. That's so awesome. long term, you see yourself staying with the company? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's, nice. it, you know, specifically in Sonoma County. So that's mm-hmm. something I'm really excited for because, you know, moving up here, um, I didn't really go to Sonoma often. You know, I had a couple, you know, youth soccer games up in Santa Rosa, Petaluma a few times, but I wasn't really familiar with the area. I just know it was wine country. That mm-hmm. was about it. But, mm-hmm. you know, living up here, it's, it's been really fun. You know, there's a lot of things to do. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about, you know, staying up here for, for years to come. Yeah. Awesome. That's good, man. Well, Matt, dude, we basically talked about everything we want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> we, we just want to thank you for agreeing to do this with us, yeah, like, of to get your no, perspective I- on everything. Like, you're, you're a cool guy. We met, we met in <laughs> school, sure. man. And yeah. I'm just really happy to see you doing well right now. No, I appreciate it, guys. You know, I, I think this podcast is, you know, awesome. And, you know, I kind of, for anyone that's, you know, listening on, I just want to, you know, let you guys know I am a resource, even if I don't know you personally or, you know, we've met in college or, you know, outside in, you know, Santa Rosa, Sonoma County in general. So, um, you know, always feel free to reach out to me, you know, one. What, what's your Insta handle? My Insta handle? Uh, it's at Matt. M-A-T-T underscore mall, M-A-U-L. So feel free to, you know, reach out to me. I, you know, lo- love to give you guys some advice or, you know, any scenarios that you run into and, you know, need someone to talk to, you know, that's kind of what I'm here for. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. And like I said, even if I don't know you personally, or we've met a few times, you know, I, I want to be able to help you because navigating post-college is, you know, a little tricky. It's stuff. hard. Yeah. And, yeah, tricky. You know, I just kind of want to tell you that, you know, everything I kind of experienced, you know, before college at college, after college, you know, ultimately got where I am today. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it is tough to have, you know, no one to look up to or no one to be that resource. So, mm-hmm. you know, if people run into that situation, you know, I just want to be able to provide any feedback. Absolutely. That's awesome. Man. I love it, man. Oh yeah. Thank you for doing this. Everybody watching on YouTube, listening at home. Thank you. Thank Hope you, you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. That was, my, a good my, one. My that was a good one. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man.